Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce theme. In this video, we're going to learn about how to create a Stripe session. So if you remember from the previous video, we were on the handle Stripe checkout function. And in this function, we're going to pass the input products, uh, set the request error, clear cart mutation, and set is Stripe order processing, as well as set created order, all of these. And then first we're going to set the is Stripe order processing to true. Then we are going to call the get create order data, and this is going to take the input and the product. And this is just our custom function, which basically is going to take the uh, products and just deliver it or output it in the shape that we expect it to. We're also going to need the line items so this function basically goes ahead and creates the line item in the shape that's required so you can check that out and then we call the create order function so create order function is going to take the order data and then in case if there wasn't any error it's going to call the api create order so this api create order is our custom endpoint uh, to create the order and if you're wondering why we're not using the GraphQL mutation when we already have the checkout. The reason for this is because the checkout mutation does not currently have all the elements that we require uh, for our functionality to successfully work. So that's why we've created our own uh, custom endpoint called create order. So you can see that under a pages API, we have created a file called create order. Uh, we're going to use the WooCommerce REST API for this endpoint. Uh, and you can install this package so you can just do npm install WooCommerce REST API over here like so. And then you're going to instantiate this WooCommerce REST API object and it's going to give you API under which you're going to pass the next public uh, WordPress URL which you're already aware about and then consumer key and consumer secret. If you're wondering how to get the consumer key and consumer secret, you can go to the WooCommerce, you can go to settings then you can go to advanced and then you click on the rest api and then you click on the add key once you add the key then if you click on generate api key it's going to give you the two keys which is the woocommerce consumer key and woocommerce secret key and make sure to add that in your environment file taking the help from the environment variable uh, example file okay which is this all right and then the version number is wc uh, slash v3 and then inside of this, it'll be a handler. First, we're going to create a variable, uh, which will be an object. Success will be false. Order ID, total currency, and error. These are the information we're going to take. If there's any uh, error, we'll, we'll say that, that the data is not sent. Then we're going to set the status to pending. And first, we're going to set it to set paid to false. And then we are going to call the orders, uh, WooCommerce REST API endpoint which will be a post request we're going to pass the body of the order that we have created so whatever data that has been passed from the front end all of the product data is going to take that and it's going to call that endpoint and go ahead and create the order once the order is successful we'll set the success order id total currency all of these values here success to true and return the response okay and if it is not uh, if there's any error, then we return the error as well. So that's your endpoint. So coming back to your um, create order function, this is going to call that endpoint that I just gave the demo of. And it's going to be post request. Uh, it's going to pass the order data. Uh, we're going to get the result. If the result has errors, we set the error. If it isn't, then we're going to set the response value of the order ID, total currency, and we're going to return the response, right? So coming back, so that's how your order is created and it's going to return the response for you. Uh, if the response doesn't have any errors, uh, it's going to call the clear cart. So under clear cart, remember that we are passing the clear cart mutation function and create customer order error, which means if this has an error, then it's going to pass to clear cart and clear cart is not going to move further this function is not going to you know continue further in case if there's an error so let's get into this function this is our custom function so again if there's any error it's not going to go ahead but if there isn't then it's, it's going to call the clear cart mutation which is basically uh if you take a look yeah you can see that this is the mutation if you open it you can see that 
it removes the item from the cart. So it's a GraphQL mutation, all right? So it's going to call that. It's going to clear the cart mutation if the order creation is successful because once the order has been placed, we want to clear the previous cart so that the session is cleared, right? Uh, so we go ahead and set the response as cart cleared. If, if there's any error, then we, we return that as well. Then once the cart is cleared, we set the is stripe order processing to false. And then if you've got the order ID after creating the order, because create customer order, uh, you know, this endpoint is going to, this request is going to return the response with the order ID. If there isn't any error, we show the error. If there isn't any, then we are going to call this function called set create order data. Let's go back to this function and see what goes on there. So now this is going to call the set created order data and that is being passed over here. So let's take a look at what this function does. So go back to the checkout form and you look for this function. So you can see that uh, this function basically uh, takes the created order data, okay, and sets the created order data. And then finally, we call the create checkout session and redirect. So this is where we create the session for the stripe. So we first take a variable, we set all the required parameters, the so success URL, which will be the current URL slash thank you, uh, because we want to redirect the user to a thank you page. And notice that we've also created a thank you page over here, which I will discuss later. So this is the thank you page. So once the order is processed and it's successful, we're going to redirect the user to the thank you page. We're going to pass the session ID. So this variable will automatically have the session ID and that will be available in the get URL. And we'll also have the order ID. So we already have the order ID that we are passing here. So we'll put that in the get parameter so that we can use the combination of session ID and order ID to get the uh, user data for that particular order. Then uh, cancel URL, we're just setting that to the current URL for now. Uh, customer emails, so we're gonna get that from input. Uh, line items, so this function basically creates the line items in a shape that's required. So you can check that out. Then you have the get metadata. Again, there's metadata function also, which is going to give you the billing, shipping, and order ID in the shape that you require in JSON format. And then payment method type will be card. Mode will be payment. And then we're going to call this function called create checkout session. So if you check, we are basically pulling this from next stripe client. So remember we already installed the next stripe. So it's already, it's available inside of client. So you can get the create checkout session. And then we also have the load stripe available. So let's go back to the create. So this is going to take the session data. So we're going to pass the session data. So you can see that this is how you create the session, right? So you have create checkout session that you pull from next stripe client, you pass all of the information it asks for. And then finally, you say await create checkout session and then pass whatever it needs. So that's exactly what we're doing over here, we are creating this variable and passing all of this value over here like this to create checkout session, which is this one. Okay, this one right here. And then this is going to return the session, uh, we'll check if or everything is good. Then we're going to load the stripe. Then we're going to call that load stripe function, which I've already explained to you here. It's available inside of stripe JS. Uh, this is going to load the stripe checkout for us so that user can go to the checkout page, which is created by stripe. And then we're going to pass the publishable key, which we already discussed that it's available here, publishable key, right under the API. And then if we have the stripe, available, then we redirect to the checkout. So again, uh, this object that's returned has a function called redirect to checkout. And this is going to redirect the user to the checkout page that's created by Stripe. So we don't have to handle that checkout page ourselves. If you were using the Stripe uh, JS for just client side action, then you had to create all of those elements yourself. But in this case, Stripe is going to do that for you, you don't have to generate that page. And I feel that the UI uh, for the Stripe checkout itself is way better. So then it's going to take the session ID, session.id, and it's going to redirect the user to that, right? So if you go and check, I'm just going to fill all the information there. So I've already filled all of the information here. And now 
if you click on stripe if you click on place order you can see that it's redirected the user to that stripe checkout and that's happening because you're calling this function redirect to checkout you're passing the session id and stuff okay and then finally it just returns null because once user has made all of this payment uh, what's going to happen is that we need to register an endpoint uh, which we need to create a webhook endpoint uh, which will be called and then at that point we are going to change the order status to uh, processing so in this case if you check if you check the orders so you can see that this is the order has just been placed one minute ago and the status is showing a spending payment right and then once you go ahead and make the payment then that will be calling the endpoint which will be our webhook and then at that point we're going to listen to an event which is checkout and once that is successful, payment is successful, we're going to update this value from pending payment to processing. All right. So in the next video, we're going to learn about how to register that webhook, how to create that webhook endpoint. All right. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And do start my repository to support my work like all the beautiful 443 people have. Do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed. And do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Cody Tech. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.